All right, welcome to an, another Lenovo IdeaPad 5 video. So we're taking a look at Cinebench 20 in all modes, plugged in and battery only. This is our IdeaPad 5 15-inch with the IPS 1080p 60Hz matte touchscreen, Ryzen 5 4500U integrated, Vega 6 graphics, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. This is the model with the plastic body and aluminum screen cover. So we're going to open up hardware monitor here just so that you can see a lot of the numbers you guys have been asking to see. You have a lot of questions about this laptop being plugged in, not plugged in, performance um, differences. I've been trying to say that intelligent cooling is pretty much going to be where it's at and I still believe that. Uh, maximum performance is really only going to be that useful when um, editing and exporting videos and uh, lots of multitasking and things like that. I'm not seeing that it's going to make a big difference in gaming. So we're going to open up Cinebench 20 here. We're going to run this through all different modes. We're going to start off with um, plugged in and running in intelligent cooling. So keep in mind, this is not to see what the highest score we can get is, rather it is to compare the different modes. We know we can score much higher. I can score at least 100 points higher without hardware monitor running. When you're doing something like this, you normally don't want anything else running. But um, the point of what we're doing here is to show the real differences. So anyways, we are doing our intelligent cooling plugged in right now. Now I want to leave this real time because, you know, speeding through it, you can't see the numbers. If I fast forward it or I just jump through and, um, you know, for those of you that this isn't your kind of video, you're probably not going to hang out and stay through it, um, even though I threw some music in there, you know. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but for those of you that are interested in these kind of numbers and uh, what's going on here, um, you know, you'll probably appreciate this and the bit of time it took to get all this done. So anyway, um, I'll chit chat a little bit here and there about what I see, but for the most part, I'll let you take in the numbers and everything. You can see that 2556 I scored earlier over there when I didn't have anything else open. Um, Actually, I think I got a 2575 earlier also uh, with no overclock, just the 4000 uh, running. Um, so on this intelligent cooling plugged in, we are looking at what 1.019 to 1.031 jumping pretty consistently between those on every single core for the voltages. Power 3.45 watt, 3.6 fairly consistent, all cores 20-ish watt altogether. That's our value right now. Maximum 34.38 and then our utilization of course is going to be 100% with Cinebench running and especially with a hardware monitor at the same time. And as far as our megahertz on intelligent cooling, we're sitting at a nice, what, 3243, 3268 um, with a max of 3996 available. So pretty good and considering that speed um, compared to the score you get that is uh, there's fantastic performance out of this six core uh, six thread processor this has been one of the most impressive budget laptop uh, CPU APU um, deals I've ever really uh, messed around with it's been uh, probably one of the more exciting laptops I've got to mess around with in quite a while And you can see staying pretty consistent on that 1.019 on the voltage to 3.1. Same on the wattage. Nothing hot around the laptop either and fan stayed nice and quiet just like I showed in the previous video testing fan noise. All right, and we got a, a 2055. Now that would normally be around a 2155, 2150 without hardware monitor open. So definitely a good for running that no problems there now we're gonna go intelligent cooling on on battery power so we'll go ahead and bring this back up now we had that 1.019 1.031 before when we were plugged in and as you can see here on battery power I think we're gonna stay very very similar uh, which is very much the point of this video. I'm being asked a lot about the difference in performance being plugged in and not plugged in. When you're using the laptop, there is no difference between being plugged in or not plugged in. Not really. Not a real measurable difference in performance. And that's something that I think is actually a great takeaway, is seeing that a laptop is made to be used portable. It shouldn't have to be plugged in all the time. And, uh, you know, those days of not getting the performance out of your machine because it's not plugged in and being a laptop that's silly yeah, and it looks like those days um, you know should be behind us with uh, CPU APU combinations like this sure I see the voltage dip a little lower here and there than it did uh, on the on the plugged in but very little and not very often it's still very close and the wattage on all the cores is about the same 2022 20, 19 I've seen it bounce around that's the same hundred percent 
maxed out, tacked, stays the same, and still that 3293 and, and, and close on the megahertz. So as you can see, what I've been explaining in comments and in other videos, plugged in or not plugged in, it's not going to make a difference. And when I do game testing, it's most likely going to be on battery power at maximum performance, at least for now, because then I'm getting the max use out of the machine. Nobody can really complain about that. And as far as battery or plugged in, honestly, it's really not going to make that much of a difference, especially if my battery is nice and charged up and I'm well above 20%, we're not going to have any problems. And you can see how consistent all that stays throughout the test. I mean, we're really taxing the system doing this. Um, and everything between the voltage, the wattage, the usage, and the speeds stay very nice and consistent. And uh, the laptop stays cool and also stays quiet uh, during this intelligent cooling. So really impressive, um, not just Lenovo machine, but very impressive AMD uh, 4500U CPU, um, CPU combination they have here. Intel's 10th gen has to look out because this is definitely a huge competitor to their 10th gen mobile processors. But AMD has been coming at them for a while. That's why I love my Ryzen 3600. So anyway, we are going to get ready to switch over. We scored a 2112 on that. So we actually scored higher on um, battery power. So that is pretty crazy to score. Uh, we actually scored higher on the battery power. So anyway, let's go ahead and switch over to maximum performance. Um, this will be on battery power first. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Uh, the 2556 earlier on maximum performance uh, battery power. Like I said, I got the 2575 also on battery power earlier. So you can see right away on maximum performance, we're not at 1.019 or 1.031 on the voltage each core. We're more like 1.2 something. So of course we're gonna have the fan rev up. It's gonna be getting rid of that heat, but we definitely don't have an overheating issue here or much of any throttling issue. So if you check this out, we also have wattage is way up from the 3.45, 3.56 we had, and we're more in the eight watt area. And instead of 19 to 22, 23 watts total on our cores, we're running in the 40s, 40, 42, 43, 44. Um, on that with a 50.41 watt max available staying 100% on the cores and instead of that 3293 3263 bouncing around we are at 3867 to 3900 something on the megahertz for each core so definitely running much quicker and closer to its 3996 available boost that it can do there you saw them all jump up to 3942 now, when I heard the fan rev back up, um, which you can't hear those things in this video, but you can check out the previous video if you want to hear the fans. Um, I could hear when the fan revved up and we hit that 39 something. So there's a slight, slight thermal throttle. But if you're looking at the numbers here, it is so minimal and slight on that. So staying in 1.23, 1.24, very consistent on the voltage. The wattage actually dropped a little bit. And I believe that also has to do a little bit with the thermals, but still... Um, no complaint whatsoever. Fantastic. Pretty darn good cooling from, Le from Lenovo also on this design. Maybe like a dual fan could have been quieter, but I mean, it gets the job done and you're not normally running it this taxed out for that long and definitely not during gaming. So we hit a 2504 even with hardware ma monitor up. So that's really good. No problems there. Definitely higher than what we were scoring, um, of course, on Intelligent. That's normally 2150 versus 2550 when you go from Intelligent cooling to maximum performance. But there again, you're not going to see that in gaming much either. So we're back to plugged in. And we're going to do plugged in maximum performance. So we can see the same thing, 1.2 something on the voltage on each core, and we're starting off at almost the 8 watts, but thermals are going to kick in pretty quickly as well. Not just because we're plugged in, you're going to get about the same performance, but because we've been running this test. But there you see, it's still going up into the 8 point something on the wattage, staying 100% on all the cores, and a nice 3967 
on the uh, clocks down there. So it's definitely trying to keep as close to that boost. There we drop down to 38. Exact same thing almost that you saw. If you look at all this bolted wattage, uh, megahertz, everything that's going on here, very, very consistent across the board. I'm telling you, it's not going to matter much if you're plugged in or not plugged in, or really if you're running intelligent cooling or maximum performance. If you're editing and exporting videos and doing some heavy tasks and you need that CPU power, kick in maximum performance. But other than that, intelligent cooling is going to get the job done for sure. And it's going to save your battery. It's going to be near silent. It's going to run nice and cool. You're not going to have any problems whatsoever. But we'll let this finish out anyways. Our new score was the 2504 versus the 2556 we had without hardware monitor open. Staying consistent, very nice on all our numbers. Voltage, wattage, megahertz, looking good. You can see the consistency if you scan through the video on everything here. Very impressive what AMD's got going on here. I mean, they really are um, close. I mean, they're they're boasting desktop class graph or um, CPU. I mean, even my Shadow PC Boost package, uh, if you're familiar with Shadow Cloud PC, scores a 1400 on their CPU. So even this mobile laptop CPU is crushing the Shadow PC CPU. So there you have a 2515. So plugged in very close to the 2505. So on maximum or intelligent, we uh, actually scored higher on battery, and on maximum performance, we actually scored um, slightly higher on plugged in. So you just never know, and there's a lot of variables, so that really means nothing. We're gonna switch over to battery saver just for a bonus run. I'm not gonna do this plugged in and unplugged because you should be seeing the point by now that it's not gonna make a difference, and I think everybody's probably done watching this video by now. But anyway, if you're interested, here's the battle battery saver plugged in uh, running Cinebench 20, and we'll see what kind of score we get compared to um, intelligent cooling and maximum performance and to be honest this is actually the first time i ran battery saver so i was also curious to see what it was doing and um yeah it's knocking that voltage down so now instead of 1.2 something for maximum or 1.019 or 1.031 for um intelligent we are at 0 0.9 0 0.925 on our voltage on all cores which makes sense for running battery battery saver the wattage is way down and we're at about 15 watt max and that's exactly what they advertised 15 on um battery saver and all the way up to uh what we were seeing 43 44 on maximum performance and in between on intelligent cooling that is exactly what amd and lenovo were advertising here Still no issues here. The laptop is running completely silent. Or, I mean, the fan is spitting, but you would have to really get down there and listen to it. Not very much thermals at all, and the laptop is cool to the touch. You can see our cores have all been running under the 3000 because of, you know, it needs to do that because of the voltage and wattage and whatnot. It's not getting as much power, but it's doing very, uh, very consistent across the board, just like any mode you put this. Uh, build in everything just runs exactly as it's meant to and gives you no problems and I have a hunch that even though this test will take a little longer the performance at a battery saver will probably be surprisingly high um, but I hadn't done this before so I'm not sure but I'm guessing it still gets pretty close to that uh, between 1500 and 18 1900 mark we'll see we'll see what it does but um, also no major drops I know we're plugged in but um, Trust me, even if we were on battery, um, you would still be seeing these nice consistent numbers and, and you would not see that voltage or wattage just drop all of a sudden. It's not how, that's not how this works. And they've done a great job of making sure that the laptop gives you the performance on battery portably just like it should because it's a portable device. I have a hunch that battery saver mode on this laptop's CPU is going to score higher than Shadow's Boost Package CPU. Uh, I love Shadow, by the way. It's fantastic. And i got a lot more videos coming up on that as well. Um, but their CPU, I just wish they would upgrade those. It really does hold back the GPU on those builds. But anyway, there you have it. 1919, even higher than I thought. Very close to 2000. What a good score for battery saver. 
All right, and so there you have it. A Series 4000 chips. Excellent. Excellent scores here. I think this showed a lot of consistency. Uh, I'm going to switch back to intelligent mode for now because that's where it's at for me. Uh, I hope this video wasn't too boring for you and that it answered some of your questions. So thanks a lot for coming to check it out. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give the video a big thumbs up and feel free to leave your comment below. All right, thanks a lot, and I will see you next time.